Welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is AP Calculus. We are doing derivatives, and uh, this is this is the exciting day for me. Uh, most of us have been fighting with that uh, this this crazy uh, definition since uh, back in May, uh, maybe even April a little bit, and we are finally ready to say, you know what? There are some easier ways to do this. The only, the only catch is is that every kind of function, every style of function, every type of function, every different family of function uh, has its own rules. And uh, just so you're aware, uh, all of this stuff, the instantaneous rate of change, all, all of these terminologies and notations uh, still remain. Just need to know that we're going to have some uh, easier ways to, to find these values, find these derivatives. So with uh, no further ado, here we go. Um, we're going to summarize some of this uh, in a minute, but uh, your book, uh, again, this is the, the Finney, Demana, Waits, Kennedy calculus book. This is all in section 3.3. It starts on page 116. Uh, so, again, I, I don't want to violate any copyright issues. Uh, Finney, Demana, Waits, Kennedy. Again, this is uh, in section 3.3. Uh, starting on page 116, and it goes through the whole section. Uh, we're going to be hitting most of the rules uh, that are in here, <clears throat> and and we're going to, you know, when we get when I get done buzzing through these rules, I'm going to kind of summarize some of this all in one thing. Um, so all this uh, uh, rule one just says that if we do the derivative of a constant function, so like for instance, let's say f of x equals three, the derivative of f with respect to x the derivative with respect to x of that constant is zero. And we could go through the whole limit thing, and, and I'm just not going to do it. But I just want to remind you that derivative uh, is slope at a point, or slope of a curve at a point, slope of a tangent line. And so I'm, I just want to ask you this. If I have the equation y equals 3, what's the slope of that thing? Well, zero rise over whatever run you want to stick on it, the slope is zero. Okay, so from a very conceptual way, the slope is zero. And really, that's all I'm going to say about that. The derivative of a constant is zero. The slope of a constant is zero. Okay, uh, this is the one that we've been looking at uh, quite a bit. By looking at, I mean not looking at. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the power rule. Now, later in this section, it's going to also talk about uh, positive and negative integers. And I will also mention that at some point, it's also going to rule out, not, I mean, it's going to allow for things that aren't even, aren't even integers. So I'm just going to uh, get rid of the whole uh, disclaimer on the powers. And basically, if you have anything that is a power function of some sort, this rule is going to work for it. Even if, even if the exponents are fractions, you know, like from square roots, even if the exponents are negative, like negative 2, meaning 1 over something squared, this rule works. And, and I'm not going to, you know, repeat the word, uh, rule in a dozen times. I'm just going to let the rule be like this. And so uh, a quick version of this might be, let's, let's say we have f of x equals x to the fifth. If that's true, then f prime is... Now, what this says is, whatever that exponent is, is now going to be in front. So, here's the exponent. It's now in front. I still have x to a power. It's just the power now, whatever that power was, it's 1 less. So, 5 minus 1 is 4, so it's going to be 5x to the 4th. And that's it. The cool thing about this is, what if I have uh, 1 over x squared? Okay, so let's say y equals that. Well, then y prime would be, well, quick little note here. Remember that y equals x to the negative second. So again, if I take that exponent, bring it out in front, negative 2, x to the, now remember, if I subtract 1 from the exponent, this is now negative 3. So this would be a fabulous way to leave it. Or if you're feeling a little extra spunky, remember a negative exponent means reciprocal, you can take that back to the bottom. Okay? Constant multiple rule. Okay, all this says is, if I have something multiplying a function, then when I do its, that function's derivative, 
I can just multiply. So for instance, let's say I have y equals 3x squared. All right, well, I'm going to deal with the derivative of this little guy right here. This, the derivative of that would be 2 times x to the 1, also known as 2x. So that means the derivative of y, in other words, y prime, would be, okay, so here I am taking that constant, 3, and then I can just bring the little 2x along times 2x. So this is my constant times the derivative of that other thing, and this is just 6x. Okay. Now, what I want to do is bring this together a little bit into a completely its own rule. Okay. So that was rule 3 along with the power rule, rule 2. So I'm going to pop over to the next page for just a second. And again, feel free to rewind or whatever. Uh, pause. So I want to take y equals, I'm going to call it a x to the n. So here, here's my constant multiplier, and here's my power function. So this is Sanford's version of the power constant product rule. So I'm going to call it rule uh, 2.5, since it's halfway, it's a blend of rule 2 and rule 3. <laughs> Clever, eh? Sorry. So y prime, then, is, you can take this exponent and multiply times x, and then I'm still subtracting 1 from the exponent, so n minus 1. Okay, so the new coefficient is the old exponent times the old coefficient. The new exponent is just the old exponent minus 1. And, and it's doing the same thing that we did just a second ago. It's just blending it together a little bit. Okay, so just just a reminder, what we had was 3x squared. Okay, I want to just pull it together all in one thing. Okay, so y equals 3x squared. Okay, so what this, this rule, the way, the way I have it written now, is I'm going to take those two, so 2 times 3, so y prime will be 3, uh, three times 2 is 6, so 6, x to the, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, so 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's just 6x. So y prime equals 6x. Okay? Let's do one, of the, one more of those just for kicks and giggles. Okay? Okay, so again, if, if uh, y equals, uh, let's say, 7 over x to the third, I'm going to write that as 7x to the negative third. So if that's true, then dy dx, also known as y prime, also known as derivative, negative 3 times 7, negative 21, x to the, now if I subtract 1 from that, ver that uh, exponent, minus 4, or negative 4 rather, uh, and you can be done. And again, if you'd prefer, uh, you can write this, negative uh, 21 over x to the fourth. Same thing. Okay? All right, let's pop back. I got, I think, just one more rule to do, and that is the sum and difference rule. So all this is saying is, if you have things that are being added or subtracted, you can do those derivatives separately. Okay. So for instance, here, here's u. Here's the derivative of u. Here's v. Here's the derivative of v. Uh, actually, not, not such a big deal. Uh, so, for instance, let, let's say I have y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. So, if I uh, do uh, ddx of 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, just trying to mix up the notation so you keep seeing it because it, it, it all means the same thing. This is still derivative with respect to x. I just want to have enough room here. Okay. All right. So all this is saying is do the derivative of this first. Okay. Well, we just did the derivative of this a second ago. The derivative. So we're going to do 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract 1 from the exponent. 6x to the 1. Okay, I'll go ahead and write it. And then on the next one, uh, I'll just rewrite it after I'm done. Okay. Now, remember that there's, a, there's an exponent of 1 here in disguise. 
1 times negative 2 would be uh, still a negative 2 or minus 2 times x to the 0. Okay, that x to the 0 comes from 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. Okay, and then one more term to go. Derivative of 1, well, this is the derivative of a constant. Now, if, if you wanted to kind of appeal to the power rule, you can, because just think of one, this is 1 times x to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. Well, if I say 0 times 1, that's 0 times x to the, and then 0 minus 1. So this is going to be 0 over x to the, I'm sorry, 0 times x to the negative 1. Sorry. Also known as 0 over x. Well, you, I know you were way ahead of me. This is, this is just 0. So I'm going to write the plus 0 just to show you where it came from. But really, this is just 6x minus 2. Okay. One little detail here I just want to point out, and this is kind of a freebie. If this is second power, a second degree, its derivative is first degree. It should make sense with the whole n minus 1 idea. <coughs> Excuse me, but I just want to make sure it got stated directly. So this started out as a combination of subtraction and addition, and we just did term by term. Okay, so you could say something clever like the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. Okay, I know, I think it actually is in the book, but I know I've heard it said otherwise too. All right, um, I just want to do a couple more. Uh, just just for fun, just so we know that we've we've seen what's going on. Okay, so let's do. I need to peek at time. Oh, 12 minutes, man! I'm just flying. This is awesome. Um, okay, so let's do y equals uh, 4x to the fifth plus 3x minus 7. Okay, so uh, dy dx derivative of y with respect to x. Again, we're just multiplying, so 20 x to the, subtract 1 from the exponent, plus, well this is to the 1, so 1 times 3 is 3, x to the 0, most people aren't going to write that, minus, and now the derivative of a constant is 0, okay, so again, this is just going to be 20 x to the 4th plus 3, that's it. Okay, um, let's do, uh, couple more, okay? So uh, I'm going to call this example one, even though I know I've done some other examples. Here's example two, so in case we need to refer back for some reason. All right, so um, f of x equals um, 2x plus 1 squared. Okay, now this is a little more complicated, and I just I, I feel the need to do this now just so that we, we see it. But I don't have, I, I mean, the thing to notice here is I have actually like a little function kind of thing inside of another function. And we, at this point, don't have the power to handle that directly. I, you cannot just say, uh, so that, just so we're clear, this is not going to be 2 times 2x plus 1 to the 1. You can't do that. There, there's more to it. And we'll, and we'll see this again in section 3.6. Okay? You can peek ahead if you like. I'm not dealing with it now. We've got enough to worry about. Okay, so just I'm going to back up. Okay, so the only way we have to deal with this right now is to multiply this bad boy out. Okay, I don't know where that 3 came from. Just pretend you never saw that. Okay, so 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So I'm distributing, uh, and I'm doing, you know, foiling for those of you who like that mnemonic. Okay, so this is still f of x. I, I haven't done the derivative yet. Okay, so df dx equals, now we're back to what we did. Same process as over there. Different problem, same process. So 2 times 4, x to the 1, plus 4 times x to the 0, plus 0. So 8x plus 4. Okay, I don't need to see that. But if that helps you, I mean, I'm going to write it right now just because I think it's useful. Okay? All right, let's do two more, and we'll call this a wrap. 
sorry, that's more of a beatbox. All right, um, let's do uh, y equals uh, 3 times the square root of x. Now, Mr. Sanford, that's just mean. What, what are you trying to do here? Well, I need you to remember that different things can be written in terms of exponents. Okay, so this is really the same thing as 3x to the 1 half. So just a quick little reminder, the, end, the root is the denominator, you can write it like that, or you can write, uh, do the nth root of b, the whole thing, to the m power, okay? So that's just a little reminder, just pause it if you need it, I'm getting rid of it. Okay, I love being able to do that because I need, I need the space. All right, so here we go. Um, y prime, well, exponent times the coefficient, so 1 half times 3 is 3 over 2, x. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. So that's fine. Uh, some of you are going to say, you know what, I'd rather write that like this. And let me just say this, don't sweat. I know we spend forever in pre-calc and Algebra 2, uh, Geometry, even Algebra 1, talking about getting square roots out of the denominator. This is AP Calculus. We're not going to sweat it. Just leave it where it is. It's fine. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to try and squeeze one more in. And let, let's say uh, g of x equals 3 over x. And we're going to do the derivative of this. Okay, so again, this is not written like a power function yet. So we're going to write it like a power function. So remember, neg uh, when we have stuff in the denominator, we can write that as a negative exponent. Okay, so here we go. You didn't see me write that 3 there. Um, negative 1 times 3, negative 3, x to the... Well, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. This is fabulous. And if you prefer, you can write it like this. Okay. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, you can extend these ideas uh, to a lot of different places, uh, but uh, this is that's the heart of it. And actually, I'm going to leave it right there. Okay. All right. Thank you much. We will see you again. See you tomorrow. Bye.